Welcome, you have reached review time with Imperial and today's review will be Power Book 4 Force Season 2 Episode 3 Subscribe to the channel, like the video, let's get into it So, uh, you have this uh, episode It wasn't too much action in this episode It was kind of, this is what we call a filler episode Where, um moving parts was moving but it really didn't um not a lot of killing so you know we were on the tail end of tommy getting shot at by little k and his that's his retaliation after gerard told him to stand down so tommy of course is speaking with diamond telling him what happened there was a little girl that got killed of course it's going to be a lot of heat Coming from that, the task force was um, created off of that. And the U.S. attorney spoke with um, the detective and pretty much asked his um, period to put him on a case. So he didn't want that. He didn't want to be a part of it. But she did anyway because she knew he was good at what he did. So, of course, you know, he went and did his recon on the street. He instantly found out who did it who did the shoot in with Lil' K, but he didn't really have nothing, no prints or anything to tie him to it, but he knew it was him. So Lil' K was missing the whole episode pretty much, and he was with his grandma, and of course they eventually found him. Now, uh, Tommy is still uh, looking for who killed Liliana, so he wanted to meet up with Walter Flynn, told Walter to give it up. He instantly could see Walter was, if it was just a little goon, Walter would have gave him up. However, Tommy picked up. It must be, uh, he already talked to Victor, so it must be Claudia. So he did request for a meet with Claudia. He met with Claudia. He wanted to look her in her eyes. And pretty much, um, she was with her henchman. And he told her he knew it was her. And once he knew it for sure, she was going to be dead. And she would never know it was coming. Now, this is where the, uh, you know, of course, Tommy has the ultimate plot armor for this series. It's his show. So he's running up to Walter Flynn's goons. And at any given time that they could just kill him. He's coming from out of town. Where are the re repercussions coming from? But they're not. So he got the plot armor for the series. So he's doing ghetto superhero stuff. So from there, in this episode, uh, you had... Um, Tommy meeting up with Gerard telling him that if he doesn't kill the person who shot at him uh, he's going to find out who did it and he's going to kill him and then Gerard is next so they got uh, Tommy like a real threat so of course Gerard went and um, contacted his, uh, his rider and she pretty much didn't want to give up the information but he told her like pretty much like yo I need that information and he put her in position where it was either her or the guy while well, basically you know he's uh she really liked him so she gave up the information where little K was he wouldn't go he went and found little K however little K's grandma came out there with cookies pretty much telling Gerard if my grandson come up dead I'm going to pick you out of a lineup and it won't be hard to do so Gerard fell back and went about his business so you also had in this episode you had uh, Tommy and Diamond going to um, being called to see Miguel. Miguel found who he thinks gave up the information to the serve to get, you know, his drugs taken. So he put, they were family members, took and put their hands in um, nitroglycerin. And once their hands froze, took and bashed their hands with a hammer. So Miguel is showing he mean business and basically he wanted to show Diamond and Tommy if they ever did something shady or lied to him, this would happen to them. 
They went about their business. Later in the episode, they did come back to Miguel again, telling him that they want more product because they have another stream of um, income selling drugs through the jail. So it did show Diamond with his uh, CO um, correction officer in the um, jail prison cell that told her, of course, she could make some more money if she was willing to... Um, handle that at the prison where he came from of course Rojas is in that prison where he put um diamond put him in a wheelchair and so at that moment Rojas wasn't having it he stopped two keys and get got them confiscated and so diamond sent in a uh, lawyer in there to speak to Rojas and pretty much to tell Rojas they get for more money. Um, he'd make more money with them than with the Serbs. And so he wasn't with it at first until the security guard, I mean, the um, CO that's uh, with Diamond pretty much planted something on him and said, I'll make this stick. You'll be down for one year um, with me. Uh, you getting arrested for this pretty much while you're in prison. So he said, no, stop. He'd do business. So. And got a new stream of income. You had this episode also with Kate Egan, who's trying to get clean in the process of getting clean. She wanna make amends. She really doesn't know how to make amends, so all she did was apologize to Tommy. And then Tommy was like, That's it. I thought she was gonna come with more, and that's all she had was just saying I'm sorry. And then he ran down all the things that, you know, she did that made her a crappy mom. She tried to do the same thing with JP, and JP was like saying the same thing, that's it. And basically, JP already knew that you got you kept Tommy when you were 16. You had me when you was 14, and you kept Tommy because he was white. You got rid of me at 14 because I was black, and she didn't really know how to deal with that. So what took place? Uh, she ended up admitting it in her AA meeting, and you know this is going to be more character development for Kate Egan. So you also had. Uh, D-Mac wanting to know why his dad didn't ever come looking for him and of course JP's um, uh, he likes the same sex so he didn't really want to um, his mom uh, D-Mac's mom told him that it wouldn't be good for D-Mac to grow up like that Darnell rather and he didn't need to uh, be around that so he kind of listened to her but not thinking that D D Mac Darnell would still need his father, and so he ex and eventually explained that to um, D Mac. But they didn't want D Mac to have a gun, so D Mac did see where they put the guns at, and D Mac pretty much by the end of the episode put the gun in his waistband and uh, went back sitting down. Now I wonder if him getting that gun like that is going to by him getting a gun like that is that going to save somebody's life if somebody come and try to uh, run in the house or something. So we'll see what that means by him getting a gun and pitting in his wayside. Tommy was trying to get uh, with uh, Miguel's sister, trying to get her, um, Maria, trying to get with her to um, take her test drive and she finally responded by the end of the um, episode. Now we end the episode off with Junkie Jannard. This um, serves pretty much ran down on him. Of course, they want their money. He didn't have no money for him. He doing bad. So this time they took his car. So Junkie Jannard doing uh, doing bad. Of course, he called Little K to come uh, pick him up. Little K showed up in the car. Basically, like, where's your car? And basically, he looking Jannard is looking worse. So. Like I said, it's looking like Gerard. I was thinking, and if you heard my last recap, that Gerard is starting off the season like the real underdog. And by mid-season or by season end, he'll get it back and he'll be like one of the ones on top because he's hitting rock bottom right now. He got no money. The crew is dismantled. Pretty much soon, you could probably think the uh, crew is going to join with Diamond, with you know CBI and all that. And so, because they're getting money and they're looking like they're up right now. So, I don't know if they're doing this character development with Gerard so he can eventually start from the bottom and wake his way all the way back up. 
but the junkiness came back so he starts sniffing and uh, little k is looking at him like in disgust like this is our leader and he's like yo never get high you open supply start running down basically say you ain't you broke you ain't got nothing going on for yourself you know basically you falling apart so out of rage gerard overpowered Lil K and strangled him. Drug him out, threw him to the, um, in the trash and drove off in the car. Ran into um, some essays, got two hits of harem and started beaming up again. So, Junkie Ger Gerard is back. And that was the episode. So, not, uh, not too much, uh, that went on only other killing was tommy shot one of um claudia's henchmen he killed one of claudia's henchmen that's it that wasn't really about nothing anyway subscribe to the channel like the video tell me what you think leave a comment till next time